they have uh, found it cute to start flying up on top of the chicken wire. They'll fly right up on top of here and sit and perch on this flimsy wire like that. Aeration and poor soil quality, so I've been switching it over to the Pro Mix. I got three different types of uh, tea leaves. All right, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> it's freezing cold. So we had remember all those videos before that I was like, oh yeah, it's not going to be cold. Uh, I was wrong. It's going to freeze tonight. So, got to protect the plants again. And, um, yeah. Going to go run some documents to the post office. That document after document here. These are monumental documents. These are life-changing documents. Life-changing. And we'll talk about it more in future videos should everything go through. But uh, earth-shattering changes happening here at Backroads. So, good stuff. Lots of exciting things happening. Get on with it! We'll be planting some things. So let's get moving. All right, before we put <clears throat> out the... Plant protection. Let's check on the girls. Hello, girls. What's up? Where's my babies? Sitting on some cabbage. They have uh, found it cute to start flying up on top of the chicken wire. They'll fly right up on top of here and sit and perch on this flimsy wire, like that. Like, oh, oh, oh. See, she knows. Where are you going? Mm, don't fall. Daddy, get out of the way. She's an expert. I think the other one is going to be right behind. Aren't you? you? Come on here. You perch. You grab it? No. I gotta make sure she doesn't fall. She is awesome at finding her balance. This one loves being up high everywhere. She's also the one that will come to the sound of your voice first. And when everybody's running away, she's running towards danger. So either she's going to be the first one that gets killed or she's going to be the leader of the pack. So another thing we've been doing is transplanting some of our watermelons, our cucumbers, our squash. We have some uh, die off happening and we got some poor aeration and poor soil quality. So I've been switching it over to the Pro Mix. Um, very much different in terms of happiness of the plant. Uh, our beans were also struggling with that. So monitoring your plants and watching their health is as simple as observing color changes, smell changes, um, wilting, you know, just got to be out there and doing it. So here we've been soaking our uh, tea seeds. I got them out now. Can't let them dry out, but I got three different types of uh, tea leaves. Soshi black sea tea and small leaf. Again, you just got to make sure they don't dry out. I'm going to be planting those today. I got the goji berries. I realized that we need two versions of goji berries to make a higher yield. So these unfortunately are the same. So I got to get some different ones to cross pollinate. 
and get a higher yield. Of course, right when I was gonna start doing something, I gotta go pick up Link. Those basketball guys have uh, a very sporadic schedule. So we had torrential downpours two nights ago and we're still getting some leaking on the living side, actually on both sides of the lean to. So uh, we got some roofing contractors here, um, very talented individuals who are trying to figure out where this is coming from. And it's not from the actual new build. Uh, we're getting water coming in behind the roof, the main roof on top, which we just resealed and re-screwed. Re and we still had some leaks. So um, they're thinking the water is wicking back underneath the, uh, the metal. So trying to come up with solutions for that. Um, I mean, we can put gutters on, but that's not gonna stop the wicking backwards. The angle of the metal seems to be not enough and the water, as it drips off the roof, some of it goes behind the uh, the flashing. So it's not leaking a lot, but you, it's leaking enough where you can't finish doing anything inside. So it dries right away and we don't really see too much, you know, like the, there's not a mold problem or anything. It hasn't, Arkansas is, uh, is funny where a lot of times if there is a leak, it's, it's dry enough here and it gets hot enough here to dry it out quick enough to where things don't rot right away. So some of the leaks in some of the buildings, you gotta, um, you gotta have a keen eye. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> man, got a frog in my throat this morning. Um, so yeah, we're gonna try to figure that out. Can't finish the lean-tos if water's getting behind the, uh, the metal siding. All right, the contractors are gone. Let's see how the uh, peas did last night. So this is our makeshift solution. Just came out and covered them. We're gonna have to uncover them now. Uh, so in our little valley here, uh, when the temperature says it's gonna reach a number, we're like on the side of a mountain uh, in this plateau region. So um, our temperature is typically a few degrees less than what the forecasted temperature will be, which is at the airport down, well, way down the road. Uh, so we have to always account for what our camera temperatures are, uh, which will give us a better indication of what the actual low temperature was. I think what I'm probably gonna end up doing is putting in a Kokoras. I forget what the acronym stands for, but I took the class to do the uh, official rain gauge and weather reporting. Uh, so I'm gonna set that weather station up out here and then I can get a better accurate um, idea of not only the temperature and the humidity, but also how much rain actually fell here. In the Ozarks, you could have five inches of rain in one spot and like two miles down the road, you don't even get an inch. So the hills make a huge difference on the weather patterns. All right, let's see what we got here. Well, they still look like peas. These are the organic sugar daddies. So yeah, those look okay. okay. Literally using beach towels. So we're looking for burnt tips, wilting, and it looks like the little planter cups and blankets worked okay. So we can start trellising these up, but had to pull them off. Hopefully this will be a video of the past so we can chuckle on. Remember when we had to do this before the tunnels were in? All right, so back here on the corn, we took the uh, low tunnel off and then it got cold. I didn't get a chance to put the cover back on and the corn took a hit. I would say 50% chance of making it. Most of them still have New leaves, uh, good structure. Some of them are toast, but um, we'll plant the rest of the rows and then replant that row if we need to. It may recover, but 
Probably not. We planted so much corn in the greenhouse or in the barn, it's not gonna matter. We have enough to replace it. And there is that variety of corn here locally too, so we can sow it back into the ground. We're starting so early, I don't think it's, we could have a total loss on everything in this field and replant it and still be fine. So it's just an experiment when we can be first to market on this stuff. And again, once these are all tunnels, or most of them are tunnels, I would like to see it mostly tunnels, we will just grow year round. We have a uh, mountain homemade here, a little store that's trying to do a year round farmer's market. And we support that effort and we will adjust our infrastructure so that we can grow and sell year round. If they're gonna have a place to sell it year round, we'll grow it year round. So as, along with our farm stand, I'd like to put a farm stand here eventually, um, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. And then our freeze dried food, for those of you who want to uh, follow us and, and be supporters, we'll send some of the produce, um, you know, our freeze dried stuff, we'll send it your way because we can ship that all over the world. So all good things. <laughs> all right, so what are we getting done today? Can't just sit here and talk to the camera. Uh, we're gonna work on the fence. Um, tonight's gonna be a little bit cold yet, so I don't wanna plant any more stuff, but we gotta get that electric line up. We gotta clear out the back pasture here. And um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and get the chainsaws out and start working on the fence. So we had, like I said, I think we probably had like five inches of rain two days ago. And where the tractor made the lines to, you know, put down the uh, wood mulch for the potatoes. And we got one more row of potatoes to make yet. That's the only place where the water pooled. And um, once that's all tilled up, we have excellent drainage in this soil. <clears throat> but look what else we have. So the deer are back here. Uh, there's not nearly as many tracks as there used to be, but we got to get that fence in. Deer, 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 deer. I mean, we can make some venison real quick, but you can get, you know, if these are going <clears> to, <throat> if these deer continue to, if they jump the fences and they get through our deterrence, I mean, once this property is completely fenced, we can let the dogs out. You know, they'll, they can be out all night long. And I think that would be the biggest deterrent. Um, one of our guys at the homestead meeting said he uses uh, rotten eggs and he plants them in the corners of his garden and the deer jump the fence, but they won't go near rotting egg. So I never heard of that before. So we, we could probably try that too on the property lines, see if that works. But deer are probably the biggest large animal threat here there's probably a herd of at least 20 that roam this area um and they're beautiful i mean they're in really good shape they're healthy deer from what i've seen um so unfortunately they can they could jump a eight foot fence no problem and eat whatever they want to eat so predator management it's all part of the homestead We'll figure it out. I think it might be time to take the, uh, what is that, maple? Oak? No, maple, I think. I think it's time to take this tree out next to the uh, pole barn. Uh, we didn't want to take it out. The previous owners planted it. They planted it too close to the house. Um, as the tree matures, it's gonna be a threat to the property. Um, which is a problem. Um, varmin can get onto the roof uh, going up this tree, which is a problem. Uh, the birds, despite the shade that it provides, the birds here will, their droppings land on everything here, which isn't ideal. All of that can be mitigated, but when the roots start going underneath the concrete base and they start lifting, uh, we're gonna have major issues. So 
We're gonna go ahead and eliminate this tree. I hate taking trees down. Uh, if I can save a tree, I will do everything I possibly can to save a tree. Um, the ones on the property line, I hate taking those down, but um, a lot of them we can just, you know, like the cedars we're gonna take out today, we're, we can probably leave the cedar tree and just bring it up so that the fence can go around it. We'll take out the prickly pear or the pear trees, buck, whatever that, the pear that doesn't produce, uh, we'll take that one out. Even though we can graft onto pear trees like that with our, our fruit, fruiting pear trees, which will give them outstanding drought resistance. But none of them are in an area where we can do that with the orchard. So we'll have to literally like plant those crappy pear trees and then graft them in the line of pear trees. We'll, we'll cover that in a different video. So yeah, unfortunately we're gonna have to take this, take this guy out. Hate to do it, but it's gotta come down. And it provides an awesome amount of shade in the summer. It's really nice having this tree here, but I don't want those roots to further develop underneath the concrete and lift it up. All right, so we're gonna mix up some new pre-mix here for the steel chainsaws. Take our lovely new government cap off of our one gallon gas can. And this is mixed 50 to one conventional. Saber ratio is 100 to one. So 2.6 ounce. This is Amsoil Saber. Um, I use Amsoil in all of our marine applications and two stroke applications. Some of the best oil out there. I usually use my motorcycle gauge, but you can run these a lot leaner with Saber Oil. Cleaner, less smoke, less fouling, more power. Can't do that with all two-stroke oil. Made in Wisconsin, Amsoil is, Superior, Wisconsin. Let's go get our chaps. So, I don't have my uh, Sawyer's helmet. So it's still packed away somewhere. All right, so as we're getting ready to put the saws out, I'm gonna put on my uh, Husky saw chaps. We're uh, building four by four and Jeep trails. You know, we're cutting stuff a lot. And so that's a lot of the times we require everybody to have good pair of safety glasses and uh, chaps on. I haven't found my helmet yet, I do have one, but we're not gonna be in a tall fall situation, but you should always wear your proper protective gear, and ear protection and eye protection. Um, typically it's best to do this with uh, a buddy system in place. So in the event that something does happen, um, you're not stuck out, stranded out in the woods somewhere. But, so yeah, we're gonna, I think I got these chains are pretty sharp and uh, I think we should probably grab the wood chipper out too. Maybe put the uh, three point hitch on the on the tractor, take the tiller off, and uh, eh, we could probably pull the chipper with the ATV. That's probably easier. Yeah, that's, that's easier. All right, what's going on here? Choke, fuel on. problem but
so if you look up the tree it is leaning this way So before we keep going here, I just want to show the pull saw attachment for the Snapper XD. This is a 10 inch pull saw attachment. And I did have an extension in here as well. Uh, the Snapper electric trimmer, the XD trimmer uses a 82 volt Briggs and Stratton battery. This is just the two amp hour one. And man, we brushed so many trails with these things. Um, just fantastic motor, high and low. You can put the straps on it. Um, it has gone through the paces. We're really happy with these. And they're fairly lightweight for how big they are. And they can do a lot of sawing. I also have the uh, snapper uh, chainsaw for this battery system. And it works really, really great. So the, so the, okay. So the DK2 power chipper does up to six inch limbs. This is model OPC506G. And it has a little storage compartment in front, little jack. Um, comes in a nice shipping container. You can order them on Amazon. You can get them at the box stores. Uh, but I was looking for something that was six inch. You put a six inch, um branch in here you're gonna have to pull it back a little bit you're gonna have to ease it in um if it does get clogged the chute comes out of the way real fast the belt is easy to adjust it's a Kohler motor so um it starts dependably when you have fuel in it and the chute has an adjustable chute so i'm just shooting it into the bucket I had I've been washed away I'm cleaning up my act and moving on in the silence of my room I'll sleep all night and get up at noon there's nothing to distract me in my Okay, so we have the clippings from the prickly pear or whatever that pear tree is and some of the cedar. And because there's a lot of green in it, we can mulch this down in the compost pile because it's a mixture of greens and browns. It should come up to temperature and it is relatively uh, wet. So we should be able to come bring it up to temp and um, just throw it in these uh, the round composter bins. Let us know if you're growing stuff yet and where you're at or what you have planned for your garden. This is Ryan from Backroads Homesteading. Join our free e-newsletter at backroadshomesteading.com forward slash join and uh, become part of the family there. We do a mix of media from Twitter and Rumble and Reddit and YouTube, Tumblr. <laughs> we got a whole bunch of different things. 
but it's all focused on that newsletter so you don't miss anything if you get that newsletter all right thanks much